Welcome to the final review exercise solutions video. You've made it to the end of the semester and of this book. We're going to review some of these problems and walk you through the solutions. We'll start with some from chapter R and chapter one. For number one and number two, it says find the prime factorization for each number. Number one is the number 27. So we're going to start with just any two factors we can think of. Um, 9 and 3 multiply to be 27. And then we're going to keep breaking it down until we can't break it down anymore. Until we get to prime numbers. So our prime factorization for 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. If you want to write that using exponents, you can. It would be 3 to the third power. That's our final answer for number one. Number two is a lot bigger number, so we're just going to start with any two numbers that multiply to be 360. Let's start with 10 and 36 and keep breaking those each down. 10 breaks down into 2 and 5. 2 and 5 are both prime numbers, so we know that we're done with 10. 36 breaks down into 2 and 18. 2 is prime. 18 is not, we can keep going there. We've got 3 and 6. 6 breaks down to 2 and 3. We've got all our prime numbers circled there. I'm just going to put them in order. I've got 3 2's, 2 3's, and 1 5. That's the prime factorization for 360, or you can write it with its exponents like this. And that's prime factorization. Number three and number four both ask for the lowest common multiple of a set of numbers. Number three uh, is just two numbers, 72 and 16. There are a couple different ways you can find a, the lowest common multiple. One way is just by writing out some multiples. So if we start with 72, the first multiple of 72 is, of course, itself. The next one would be 72 times 2 which is 144. 144, let's check to see if that is divisible by 16. Plug it in the calculator. 144 divided by 16 does give us a whole number. That is 9. So it is a common multiple, and it happens to be the lowest one, because 72, we didn't check that one, but we should have. 72, if I divide that by 16, that does not give me a whole number. So it's not a common multiple. So the lowest common multiple of 72 and 16 is 144. There are other ways, and one way we've talked about in this class is using the prime factorization. So that's how I'm going to do number four. Uh, so just like we did in number one and number two, I'm going to break down these three numbers, 12, 15, and 30. So 12 breaks down into four and three and continues. So the prime factorization of 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. 15, I'll do right here, is just 3 and 5. Those are already prime. Now I'm writing these over here, but I'm going to line up the common prime numbers for what I'm going to do next. So I have 3's for 15, and 12 didn't have any 5, so I'll leave it there at the end. 30, let's break down 30. We've got there 5 and 6. 5 is prime, 6 is not. 2 and 3 are both prime. So the prime factorization of 30, all right, right here, lining things up. So I've got a 2. I uh, don't have another 2, so I'll skip a space. I have a 3 and a 5 again. 2 times 3 times 5 is 30. Now I'm going to just take what I need to make my prime factorization of the lowest common multiple. I only need 1, 2 from this column. 1, 2. I'm going to take 1 from each column. 1, 3 here. And 1, 5. I don't need any of those extra numbers. I just need 1 from each column. So the lowest common multiple of 12, 15, and 30 is that amount. But I can plug that in my calculator. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, 
times 5 is 60. So the lowest common multiple of 12, 15, and 30 is 60. And we could have done it the way we did number 3, where we just start listing out multiples of the numbers and find one they have in common. But this is another way to do it. There we go. All right, let's move on to number 5 and 6, where we're asked to evaluate. And this is going to mean we're going to plug in some values here. On number 5, we're going to given a formula for volume. And we're going to plug in what we know. We know the radius of this cone. I'm not going to plug in pi yet. I'll just leave it as its symbol. The radius is 4, and that's being squared. And the height of this cone is 3 inches. I'm going to start simplifying what I can. So order of operations, I'm going to do the exponents first. 1 third times pi times 16 times 3. 16 times 3 is 48. And because we're multiplying, I can kind of rearrange these so I can deal with the fraction before I deal with pi. So I'm going to do 1 third times 48 which is 16 times that by pi in the calculator and you can use 3.14 or you can use the pi button on your calculator you get 5, oh, excuse me, 50 27, I'm rounding there to the second decimal place and it was in inches, so this is inches cubed for volume on that one, number 5 Number 6 is not a formula, it's just a polynomial that we're going to plug in negative 2. So 3, I'm going to put parentheses around it, negative 2 squared minus 12 times negative 2 minus 6. Again, I'm going to follow the order of operations to find the value. So I have first exponents, negative 2 times itself, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Now I can do multiplication. 3 times 4 is 12. Negative 12 times negative 2 is positive 24 minus 6. Going left to right, that's 36 minus 6, or just 30. There you go on number 6. Now number in 7 and 8, we got some fractions we need to simplify. And we've got to remember way back when from chapter R, that this symbol on either side here is absolute value. Which means whatever answer we get when we simplify that fraction, our final answer will become positive because it's telling us how far away that number is from zero. So inside my absolute value bars, I have negative 12 over 4. That simplifies to be negative 3, which becomes now positive 3 because of the absolute value sign. Number eight, we have uh, two fractions that we are subtracting. Remember when we subtract a negative, that becomes plus a positive. So this is really negative 4 eighteenths plus positive 2 ninths. And whenever you add or subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. So I'm going to make this instead of 2 ninths, 4 eighteenths. So negative 4 eighteenths plus positive 4 eighteenths. Oh, that worked out nicely. We just get 0 eighteenths. But you don't have to write the 18, just 0. Whew, number 9 and 10 are, again, using that order of operations. We want to try to simplify these expressions. Uh, number 2, sorry, number 9. We have the 2 out front, but we're going to save that for last and we're going to simplify everything inside those square brackets first. So I'll distribute this 3. It's something we learned in chapter 1. Oops. Oh, that's not going to work. I'll just write it here. All right. I'll distribute this 3 first, I'm leaving that 2 out front. And I'll have 3y plus 6 as I distribute that 3. 
minus, now I can distribute the negative 2 as well, minus 8y plus 10, minus 14 over here. Inside, before I bring in my 2, I can combine like terms. 3y minus 8y is negative 5y. 6 plus 10 is positive 16. Don't lose that 14 there at the end. I'll distribute the 2. We get negative 10y plus 32 minus 14. Now this 32 and minus 14, those are again like terms. So my final answer is negative 10y plus 32 minus 14, which is 18. You can't do anything to solve it because there's no equal sign. I'm just simplifying what's there. So number nine is done. Number 10. This is the final problem for chapter R and chapter one review. So here, again, I have those absolute value symbols. I'll use those in a minute, but all the other ones are just plain old parentheses. So let's start with what's inside the parentheses. 20 times 8 minus 3 is 5. Negative 4, again, inside my absolute value, I'm going to simplify inside there as well. 3 minus 10 is negative 7. Over negative 10, and I have exponents down here on the bottom, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Minus 2 times 5 plus 2, which is positive 7. Now again, the absolute value means whatever is inside there is going to become positive. So I'm just going to rewrite it that way. Still have everything else the same, but now this negative 7 is positive 7. Changed right there negative 10 times 4 on the bottom, negative 2 times 7. Now we've got lots of multiplication. I'm going to go ahead and multiply those. 20 times 5 is 100. 4 times 7 is 28. Negative 10 times positive 4 is negative 40. And negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. Minus 14 in this case. 100 minus 28 is 72. I'm going to come up here. 72. On the bottom, negative 54 is what we have left. So if I divide the top, let's do by 9 to simplify my fraction here, I get positive 8 over negative 6. I can go even further because those are both divisible by 2. Divide the top and the bottom by 2 and I have negative 4 thirds as my final answer on number 10. That simplified rather nicely. That's chapter R and chapter 1. We'll go ahead and conclude this video and you can click on the next video for chapter 2.